everybody. Today we're going to go over the calculations for a capacitor when it's charging and discharging. So if you remember, a capacitor has two jobs, to charge and to discharge. So if the charge voltage of the capacitor is below the applied voltage, then it will charge up to that voltage. If the applied voltage drops below what the capacitor's charge voltage is, then the capacitor will discharge until it gets down to that voltage again. So basically tracks the voltage applied to it, but with the delay. <clears throat> now, we're gonna go over uh, just simple calculations and a little demo on uh, multi-SIM with respect to capacitors charging and discharging. So uh, we'll switch screens here. Nice. Okay, so in this circuit here, we have a single pole single throw, a single pole double throw switch. So when we are in position A, we have our capacitor being charged by E. Okay, so in position A, it's charging. Okay, in position B, in position B, the capacitor has no voltage applied to it. This is the circuit, so it will discharge. Whatever voltage is stored in that capacitor will discharge into R2, okay, so that'll be discharging. All right, so let's go into position A, where we're charging. So in position A, this is our loop, okay, so we need to calculate our time constant. So that is the tau in position A, and that is R times C, R1 times C1 to be more precise. And that is 1K times five micro, okay? And that gives us five milliseconds. Okay, so that is tau. Tau is five milliseconds. It takes five time constants to charge this capacitor to almost E, like 99% of E, okay? And it does follow a chart we are going to, um, a second here. So, our charge follows a pattern, okay? So what it's saying is after one time constant, time T equals RC after one time constant, the capacitor charges to 63.2% of the applied voltage. After two time constants, 86.5%, 95%, 98.2% after four time constants, and 99.3% after five time constants. And it will slowly, keep leaking its way up. But five time constants is generally considered the time it takes for capacitor to fully charge. Okay, so what we're saying here is, it's going to take five tau is 25 milliseconds, okay? And that is when VC, we put small v because it's a, a changing voltage. VC is approximately equal to E. So it's approximately equal to 12 volts. All right, <clears throat> so that's what we get there. And it takes five time constants for it to do that. In position B, we have a new tau because we have a new loop, okay? And that tau is, now we'll call it tau B, and that is R2 times C1, all right, which works out to 3K times five micro. So that is approximately, not approximately, that is 15 milliseconds, okay? It's 15 milliseconds. So five tau, this is how long it takes for a capacitor to fully discharge. 
for practical purposes. So five tau is equal to 75 milliseconds, okay? So at that point, VC, the voltage in the capacitor is going to equal approximately zero volts, right? In this case, in this case, it's zero because zero volts is what's being applied to it. If it was, uh, if we had turned this down from 12 down to three volts, then it would take five tau to get down to the three volts, all right? So let's demonstrate that. So this is what we have. We have the circuit that, that I have drawn on there, 1K, five microfarads, 3K, all right? So what happens is we're going to make this happen again. Um, So what we're seeing here is, this is our scope. So what's happening is we have, we're at zero volts here. We set the zero line on the scope down to here, two volts per division vertically, five milliseconds per division horizontally. So we start at zero, we are charging, and it took this, so it's two volts per division, so it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So this is 12 volts here. And it took one, two, three, four, five to get up to that level. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So to get up to that level, and then it just creeps its way up. Okay, so there is a delay in becoming fully charged. And at five milliseconds, at five milliseconds, it took one, two, three, four, five time constants to get up to that level. All right. Now, when we discharge, when we discharge, I'm just going to take this line out. Let me stop this. Take this line out. I'm going to put it across R2. Okay, so the voltage, in, when I'm discharging, the voltage in the capacitor is the same as the voltage in R2 because they're in parallel. So we have this now. So I'm going to, there. Now what I have is the instant that I flicked that switch, R2, VR2 was the same as VC1, which is 12 volts because it was fully charged from here. And then it slowly discharges down to zero. Let me change the time here because tau was different. So I'll do this again. Here we go. So. If we were at, we're at 10 milliseconds per division and we know tau is 15, so it took 75 milliseconds. So let's see here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and halfway through right there, 75 milliseconds and the capacitor discharged down to zero, all right? It discharged down to zero. Now, We've proven that, we've talked about that in class. But what if, what if we wanted to, um, what if we wanted to find out what the voltage was, not after the full charge, but what the voltage and the capacitor was at, say, um, 20 milliseconds or 15 milliseconds or 8.9 milliseconds. What if we wanted to figure that out? So there's a way to do that. When we're charging, when we're charging, we can figure out where we are on the slope. So if I go back to that slope for a sec, This is where we can figure out our voltage anywhere on this slope. So on the charge, we calculated tau to be five milliseconds. So this is five milliseconds, 10, 15, 20, 25. But what if we wanted to figure out the voltage at, let's just say eight milliseconds. So about here, what would the voltage be about there? 
okay? And this is how we do that. <clears throat> so the voltage for figuring out the voltage in a capacitor while charging at any given time, so again, small v, because of the changing voltage, the formula is E, which is the voltage being applied to the capacitor, times one minus E to the negative T over tau, okay? So E is our applied voltage, in this case, 12 volts. The small e is the base for natural logarithms, okay? So it's on your calculator. Most calculators have it, e to the power of x, all right? So if we wanted to do, that is the value of e, all right? But most calculators have e built into it. And then to the power of negative t, which is time, over tau, which is our time constant, okay? So we will say, what is Vc at t equals eight milliseconds, okay? At eight milliseconds. So what we would say is Vc is equal to E times one minus E to the negative T over tau, all right? Which is 12 times one minus E to the negative eight milliseconds over five milliseconds. All right, so that gives us 12 times, <clears throat> excuse me, one minus E to the power of negative 1.6, 1 1.6 is eight divided by five, which gives us 12 times one minus um, 0 0.202, which is 12 times, I'm doing it a step at a time, uh, some of you will be able to do this in one step on your calculator, which is great, 0 0.798. So VC at eight milliseconds is 9.577 volts. <clears throat> okay, do you believe me? I, I know I calculated, but is it true? So let's go back to multi-sim. I'm gonna go back to multi-sim for a sec. And let's go on the charge. Okay, so let's start this again. And we'll go to charge. No. Uh, slime again. There we go. There. So that's what we have. So now let's spread that out a little bit. Okay, because we can. There, this is our charge curve. And we want to know the voltage at eight milliseconds. We calculated 9.577 volts. So eight milliseconds, this is, let's take this to be zero. We're at two milliseconds for horizontal division. Two milliseconds, so two, four, six, eight. This is eight milliseconds here. So let's go up. What is the voltage at this point? Or as, uh, vertically, this is two volts per division. So the way we can measure this is we can use our cursor function, all right? And we'll set up the voltage. So what we'll do is we have our, our two cursors, and this is telling us how far the cursors are apart. So I have one cursor set at the zero line already. The other cursor, let's move it up to where our charge curve intersects eight milliseconds. So let's say we're doing this by I, okay? So if you look on the right here, it says 9.46 volts, okay? When we do by I on a screen this small, it's hard to get it down, but we are in the general ballpark. We calculate 9.577 and by I we see 9.46, all right? So if we did want to spread this out even more, 
when we learn more about scopes is we can move the signal over. So it starts right on the left, there. And then let's spread this out some more. So we're at two milliseconds per division. So let's put it to one millisecond per division. There. All right, and we said eight milliseconds. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we actually were on pretty good. We were on it pretty good. So, um, so that's what we see on there. So there is a way to calculate where you are on a certain point of the charge curve. Let's put it back to where it was. And then move it back. And there's a way to calculate and confirm. So here we go. All right. So what if, what if we want to calculate the voltage at a certain point during the discharge curve? So what we have here now is, in our case, we did, we did, um, calculate this or charge it up to 12 volts. So we let it go to a full charge, all right? We let it go to a full charge. Now, when we are calculating the value at discharge, what we're using, first of all, this is the formula. It's VC is equal to V naught times E to the negative T over tau, okay? That's the formula, V naught is the initial voltage of the capacitor when the discharge begins. So in this case, V naught is equal to 12 volts. That is this case only. V naught is equal to 12 volts, all right? <clears throat> so what we would do is we'd say VC, and let's say we wanna calculate VC at uh, T equals, time equals 40 milliseconds. What is the discharge voltage, or what's the voltage of the capacitor at 40 milliseconds into the discharge? All right? So what we would say is VC is equal to V naught times E to the negative T over tau, all right, which is 12 volts times E to the negative 40 milli over 50 milli. Okay, 50 milliseconds is our tau during the discharge because R2 is 3K and C is five microfarads. So that gives us 12 times um, E to the negative 2.6667. That's what we get, which is 12 times 0 0.069. And that gives us uh, 833.5 millivolts, okay? So that's what we have there, 833.5 millivolts. So what are we gonna do now? Let's go to, uh, so VC, at T equals 40 milliseconds is equal to um, eight hundred and thirty three point five millivolts. Okay. So let's go back to the screen. Let's go back to the the multi-sim, there we go. So we have, uh, I need to switch my line again to measure R2. There we go. There, there is our discharge curve. And we said, let me do it again. So I catch the whole thing there. All right. 
So where are we now? Let's see what the voltage is at 40 milliseconds. So this is zero. This is zero. And at five milliseconds per division, we're going to go across eight. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So we're going to lower this cursor to where the discharge curve is at 40 milliseconds. OK? So we are uh, about there. OK, again, we're eyeballing it. We're eyeballing it. And if you see our measurement, it is 860 millivolts. And we calculate 833.5 millivolts. All right. So that's the first part of what we're doing here. Okay, those were simple. Those were full charge, full discharge, and then we're just measuring along at certain points, but we did let it charge the whole way. But what if, what if, okay, we took this circuit? Let's just take this circuit for a sec. Stop sharing. What if we said this? What if we said, what is VC? What is VC after? So instead of staying in position A for 5 tau, why don't we say that what is VC after, uh, let's say, 12 milliseconds? in position A, then nine milliseconds in position B. So we're not letting it fully charge, okay? We're not letting it fully charge. We're saying that we're gonna put this in position A and after nine milliseconds, we're gonna cut it off and put it in position B. For After 12 milliseconds, we're gonna cut it off and put it in position B for nine milliseconds. <clears throat> How do we do that? Okay, so while discharging, position A, okay? Tau A was equal to R1, C1, and we know from before that that was um, five milliseconds. All right, so we just need to calculate what is VC at T equals 12 milliseconds. <clears throat> okay, well, that should be relatively easy because we know the formula that VC is equal to E times one minus E to the negative T over tau. All right, gang? Which means that is 12 times one minus E to the negative T is 12 milliseconds, and tau is 5 milliseconds. So that would work out to 12 times 1 minus E to the negative. And if we do 12 divided by 5, 2.4, OK, which is 12, 1 minus E. Ah, I wrote the same thing down again. Okay, that's included in your tuition. So <clears throat> you won't be charged extra for that. 12 and then one minus, so e to the negative 2.4, e to the power of negative 2.4, works out to 0 0.9, 0 0.091. All right, which is 12. And then one minus that is 0 0.909, which works out to 10.911 volts. Okay, so that is VC. So at T equals 12 milliseconds in position A, 
All right, VC is equal to 10.991 volts. All righty. I should label this a little better. Position A for 12 milliseconds. Okay, now we are going to switch over to position B for nine milliseconds. Okay, so if you remember from before, tau B was equal to R2 times C1, which worked out to 15 milliseconds. Okay. Now, our new V naught, V naught is not 12 volts this time because we did not let the capacitor fully charge. V naught is 10.991. That is our new V naught. Okay. So now, and T is equal to nine milliseconds. So now our, new, our formula is VC is equal to V naught times E to the negative T over tau, okay? Which is 10.991 times E to the negative nine over 15. All right, so this is T and that's tau. And that gives us 10.991 E to the power of negative nine divided by 15 is 0 0.6. Okay, which gives us 10.991 times Zero point five four nine, which works out to six point zero three two volts. So that is that is our um, voltage after allowing it to charge for 12 milliseconds and then switching over to discharge for nine milliseconds. But why do we care? Like, why would, why would somebody say, well, just who cares? You're just gonna let it charge anyways, you just let it discharge, but it does matter. And I'll show you an example of where it matters or where it will matter. You'll get into this more uh, in later semesters, but if we, let's go back to Multisim. So here we are. So I'm going to switch windows in multi-sim. So we're here now. Now what I have is a function generator that puts out a square wave. So basically on off, on off, on off, all right? And I have the same circuit that we just had with a variable capacitor in there, okay? So if I start this, I need to stop the other one. If I start this, okay, this is my signal. Okay, so we have pretty much a square wave. Let's turn our capacitor down to zero. It's down to zero, so we have a perfect square wave, okay? Now, what happens is I start adding capacitance. So now I'm getting a charge and a discharge effect, which is delayed because T equals R times C. So we do have a tau, okay? And that time constant is charging, is causing a delay in charging and a delay in discharging. So let's add some capacitance. So you see our variable capacitor. I am at 5% of four micro. And look what it's doing. It's starting to have a little bit of a curve 
showing a delay, okay? So as I'm adding capacitance, R times C or tau is increasing. So it's taken longer for that positive slope to charge and it's taken a little bit longer for it to discharge, okay? And you see, as I add capacitance, it's going even more. Now look what happens when I go too high. Look what happens when the time to charge and discharge exceeds the time that I have. So this is the top of the wave, okay? This is the intended top of the wave right here. But as I add capacitance, increasing the time it takes to charge, if I go too far, it will not be charged in time to reach the top. So look what's happening. This is the intended top and bottom of the wave. Look what happens as it's taking longer to charge and discharge. So it's not even getting there. It's not even getting to the place I need to be when it already starts to discharge. Okay, so timing is everything. So when you're, when you get it to the point in your programs where you are designing circuits with capacitors, you will need to design that circuit with capacitor values that allow you to get done what needs to get done or allow the capacitor to do its job, okay? Because they are affected by time. And sometimes people say, well, you know what? Well, if this capacitor does this great a job, then this other capacitor must do an even better job. And so they'll just throw in a big capacitor and that just messes everything up. So you need to calculate how much time you have you need to make sure that your components work within those time frames. But you'll get more into that in more advanced courses. I just want to show you the effect of uh, increasing your value of tau, of your time constant. Okay? So again, as I decrease my capacitance, now that is not to say that decreasing is always the answer. It depends on what's going on. Okay, but there is an effect of tau that needs to be taken into consideration when you are uh, designing, say, power supplies, uh, filter circuits, anything like that. You need to take into consideration the value of R and C because that affects tau and that affects your circuit. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, so we did capacitors, charge and discharge. You can rewind and see those calculations again. Um, and thanks for watching.